guys, welcome to the Craft Beer Channel and welcome to another beer log. Today I'm down at Draft Half Chantry uh, drinking Pilsner and Kel Tank beer, uh, which I do probably more than you might realise. Um, so around Christmas I did a beer log which had a very beautiful Christmas message about unity uh, in which I inadvertently slagged off a lot of people who do what's called the Iceman Pour. Uh, I stand by my comments about the Iceman Pour, it's ridiculous, uh, and I'm about to show you why with a very important person. Um, so, welcome to the screen. Hi there! Rob, uh, from Pilsner Urkel. That's me. Um, you're the beer master? The beer master. The beer master. What a, what a title. Um, now, Robert, Robert pours his beers in a very particular way. Uh, and he doesn't know what the Iceman pour is. So the first thing we need to do is show him that. So if my grammar's assistant can pass me a phone. Could, could you just tell me what you think of somebody pouring their beer like that? Uh, shite. Shite? <laughs> um, I don't think that beer has been poured. No, what's happened um, it's just been weed into a bar. Uh, you took the words right out of my mouth. I thought I thought I might. <laughs> what's wrong with a pour like that first? Well, firstly, it has no foam. It's a fundamental. He's cocked it. It means it's oxidizing from the moment it's in that glass. Horrible stuff. Boo. So <clears throat> The reason I've, I've come to Robert and I've come to, to drink some Pilsner Cal is because the Czechs, they, they even train the people that pour the beer very carefully to make sure it's served perfectly. Am I right? That's correct. I mean, we're the highest consumers of beer in the world per capita. And if you don't pour your beer properly in the Czech Republic, you're out of business immediately. Okay, so there are three ways of pouring a Pilsner Cal uh, and indeed pouring any kind of beer properly. And Robert is about to guide us through and then I'm going to drink some beer and tell you how good it is. The three pours are crisp, smooth, and the last one is? Uh, uh, oh, you've been listening. Blicker. Blicker, the milk pour. So the crisp is actually a very bitter pour. It brings out all the bitterness of our SARS hooks in our beer. The smooth is actually a balance of sweet and bitter within our beer. And the last, the Mariko, is all about the sweet maltiness within our beer. So should we start with, with what you also call the British pour? That's the crisp. Yep. And, right. and, and go from there. So well, uh, let me correct that. It's more an international pour than a British pour. Okay. Even though I think in England it's a standard way of pouring a, a standard lager. Um, and as a, as a result, the English consumers are used to lagers being quite bitter on their taste. So it's about just opening the tap and pouring your beer inside the glass. So in this way the, the beer is hitting the oxygen? This, in this way the beer is oxidizing as it enters the glass already and as it smashes, as it uh, hits the surface of the beer, it actually smashes even further. But the, the, the fundamental thing is it's oxidized. The beer has already become bitter. The more you oxidize a beer, the more bitter tones come out of it. Okay. We have 39 bits of units coming out of this. So even this is a slightly, slightly compromised beer if you're looking for smoothness at least. Definitely. But if you're looking for an occasion where you, when you're eating a lot of fatty foods or very uh, rich foods in flavor, this is the perfect pour to actually cleanse away the palate and allow you to enjoy the meal over and over again. Okay. All right, second pour. Let's do the opposite, the, the two extremes. Yep. That's the bitter. I'll show you the sweet. Now the sweet is all about just the foam. It is just the protein combined with SARS hop oils to create this beautiful velvet wet foam. This is not the dry foam you guys don't like. So th this is like, I mean people talk about milkshake IPAs now with lactose. That, that's a milkshake beer, come on. Come on, let's start pouring our IPAs like that. That is the ex opposite of the Iceman pour. How sexy does that look? That is amazing. And the consistency of it is beautiful, like the, almost like the Guinness, Guinness foam. Mmm. Yeah. It's really, really creamy. Now, that's because it's wet foam, that's not wet dry foam. foam. So what's dry foam? So dry foam is just uh, smashed up beer or attached to oxygen air bubbles, if you like. It creates the big bubbles. Um, and the taste that comes out of dry foam is very actually metallic, very bitter. Um, it's the reason why people hate it. Yeah. It's, it's the, you call it soap yeah. water, don't you? So if you? If you just slurp, get, get a bad lager, slurp the, the head off the top and it's very metallic. It tastes like iron. Yeah. It's yeah, the same thing That is because of oxidation. Very much so. That, there is not a bitter, a bitter note to that, that entire beer until it turns into slightly oxidized flat beer. But that's why you drink it super quick but responsibly, am I right? That's correct. That's correct. 
So tell me about the final pour, which I guess, is that the most common Czech pour? That is the way we uh, consume all our beers in the Czech Republic. And uh, that is basically a good head on top of a beer, with the beer being poured underneath the head. Uh, allowing the head to preserve the beer as long as you're drinking it. Yeah. So, as long as there is foam on top of your glass, you can drink the beer. Once the foam dissip dissipates, it starts to oxidize, it starts to become more bitter, it doesn't hit the freshness cues of the beer drinker in check. Does the barman swipe it away and give you a fresh? Uh, more or less, that's what happens. That'd be good service. All right. So we're gonna first create a little bit of the wet foam. Insert the tap inside the foam, underneath it, and try and build a beer underneath it. Now, this offers a perfect balance, but most importantly, it offers all the freshness of the aromas, it, it offers the, uh, the sweetness, the caramel tastes, it's got the breadery tones in there, all captured underneath the foam. And because it's not oxidizing, you're getting the true nature of the taste. So you're getting, you get that smooth body from the head, you get a delicious, slightly buttery, very, very hoppy, kind of strawberry kind of vibe from the beer. Um, and then it's pretty clean. It's not as clean as the crisp, but it is very, very clean. So guys, this is how a beer should be poured. You should be compromising your beer by letting oxygen touch the beautiful golden amber hue that is underneath. Uh, this way you get smoothness, you get bitterness, you get sweetness, uh, and importantly, no metallic kind of flavors, which is what you're getting uh, when you're pouring like an ice pan. It looks cool, but it doesn't taste cool, and that's really what beer should be about. Robert, thank you for your, your Sesame Street style masterclass. It's a pleasure, and I want to add one more thing, guys. There's always a concern that we're shortcutting you by giving you a bit more foam. That is not true. Our glasses are designed to actually accommodate the extra foam. So we're giving you a full pint when you're paying for a full pint. So, cheers to that. There you go. Uh, what's the word? Nazdravi. 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 Cheers.